In today's video, we will look into Magic Leap 2 hand tracking features, including creating and demoing a project where we're going to be building a real-time hand visualizer. We will look at each of the hand key point assignments, hand gestures API to detect common gestures such as a hand pinch, a hand open, also how to set up hand tracking in Unity to get a project ready for the app simulator and also device deployment. First and very important, Magic Leap 2 supports hand tracking for the Magic Leap Native C API, Unity, MRTK 2.8, MRTK3, and most recently, OpenXR. Second, I mentioned key points, right? But what are really key points? Well, the ML2 assigns 26 key points to each hand to create a three-dimensional representation of the hands. This means that we have basically positional data, also rotational data, to play with in Unity for each one of the key points generated. All right, guys, so the first thing that I want you to do is go ahead and clone this repo which is the one that we created based on the previous video. If you haven't watched that video, make sure that you watch it above. You can either do an SSH to clone it or you can download it as a zip file. So based on that, which is basically we went through input and with the controllers, this video is specifically for hand tracking. So we're gonna look at everything that we need to do to basically integrate it. So the first thing is go into file and then build settings go into player settings and you're going to see that we have this magic leap node the one that we're going to enable is going to be hand tracking so just make sure that you enable that once you enable it you can close out of everything we're going to keep these as basically as an android but we also have a standalone for the app simulator so that we can use that without having to deploy i'll show you both versions will deploy to the device and also show you how it runs on the app simulator because it's going to be very very powerful and you guys can see here that we have like app simulator controller app sim hand tracking permissions in here if you didn't do this or integrated the app simulator into unity make sure that you do that i'm going to be linking that video right above it as well but once you do that you're going to get basically this panel in here on the window which is called magic leap app simulator and there's going to be multiple you know type of windows that you can bring in for the app simulator itself so you can just do low default and it's going to look very similar to this i did some tweaks but for the most part it should be very similar and this is cool because when you run it it's going to tell you here if hand tracking is allowed or not basically simulating everything and then we're going to be focusing on the app sim hand tracking it's going to show us the basically the position and orientation of the left hand versus the right hand we're also going to be able to use the gestures that are provided in here so let's go ahead and get started i'm going to go ahead and create a new scene so just right click in here and then go ahead and create a new scene this scene we're going to be calling ml2 and then i can say hand tracking demo and then just go ahead and double click it and i'm going to go ahead and go into build settings here and then i'm going to add this scene and then we can uncheck the previous one that way we can deploy it to the device as well once we're done okay so now that we have that basically we're going to start with something very rough so we can delete the main camera i'm also going to be adding the exit rig this is basically a variant of the exit rig that uh, magically provides it's, a, it's the same i just wanted to keep it here so that it was closer i didn't have to go through you know some of these folders that were under packages so basically just ease of for me to be able to teach you in an easier manner but basically add an extra rig once you get the extra rig i'm also going to be adding a x basically the head input manager that we created before and that is so that we can move the logger that i'm gonna that i'm gonna be adding as well and that way the logger is going to rotate based on my head position and movement so what i'm gonna do is if i go here there's gonna be a logger that i can add and this logger should be already set to go with what we need and then what I'm gonna do as well is drag it and drop it in here. And again, some of these components you've probably never seen, but they are going to be included in the repo and you can watch the previous video to understand how everything works. But basically with that, you should be able to hit play here. I can go back, forward, and then the UI, it's all moving correctly. You can also see hands, but these are the hands that the app simulator is basically creating for us. I can move it left, I can move it right, I can also you know, move it up and down and then also on the Z axis. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new script in here. 
and then let's go ahead and go into C Sharp script. This one is going to be called the Hand Tracking Manager. All right, so it looks like this is up and running. We can go and move closer. And you can see that ML permissions for hand tracking was enabled. In the instance that it wasn't enabled though, let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and try that. It's gonna say else. Then we can say something like, we can say ML permission for hand tracking is missing. Okay, so it looks like this finished loading. So what I can do here is I can say deny. So now we could see permission for Magic Leap was changed to deny. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit play and see if we get that different log entry. Okay, and you can see right now that it is saying ML permission for hand tracking is missing. So that shows you how you can use the app scene permissions to allow and disallow that. So now it should be allowed. You can see that log entry in here and everything should work, everything. So I'm gonna also implement the update method. And in here, we're gonna be getting basically feature information. We're also gonna make sure that we have the devices, basically hands available for us. So what I can do now is in here, we can detect, okay, whether the left hand device is valid or not. This is basically saying, is it, has it been set or has it not been set? So I can say it's valid. In this case, it's not valid. So we're gonna be checking for that. Or if the right hand, so you'll say right hand device, is not valid. If any of these ones are not valid, then we need to make sure that we get those, right? So I'm gonna say left hand device, and then we're gonna say input subsystem, and then we can also access, in this case, it's gonna be utils. And then there's a utility here that we can use, which is called a find magic leap device. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here. It's gonna be right hand device. And then we can just change this to be right hand device. All right, guys, so you guys can see now that we're displaying all the different features. I'm gonna go ahead and pause it so that we can, that we can read it. So you can see if I go here into the logger, looks like this refresh already, but we can see it in here that we're getting all the different bones. So we can get the ring bone, the tip, the dip, the, the peep, basically all the different bone names that are specified for the hands. In this case, it's gonna be for the right hand. In this case, I'm gonna be adding a new serializable field. It's gonna be for what I want to show. Just to give you an overview, we added an instance here for the prefab for each key point. We also added a bone visibility confidence, also a list of bones for the data that we're gonna be displaying, the visualizers that we're gonna be displaying, and this is so that we can keep that in cache. Also an enum for the hand skeleton, either the left hand or the right hand, since this class is gonna be building both of them for both hands. And then we also added in here the display features that I showed you before. Also, there's going to be a bill hand, simple a skeleton that it's going to be getting the data out of the bone. So we went through these. I also talk about how we can combine all of these bones into a global list for each hand. So that's what I did here on this method. And this is what implements that. So basically it's concatenating each one of those lists into a final list for each one of the hands. And then we also build the hand visualizer, which is the one that is responsible for getting the bone position and also rotation and also updating the bone visualization that we're gonna be using for each one of the bones. So the next thing that I'm gonna do though is I want to go ahead and concentrate in adding that bone visualization, which is gonna be fairly simple, but it's gonna be something that we need to create. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna create a new 3D object and this one is gonna be just a sphere. This one could be, we can just call it the bone visualizer, just to be a little bit fancy. And then we can zero out everything. So make sure that you zero out everything. And then I also need to make this a lot smaller. It's gonna be 0 0.01, 0 0.01. And that way it's gonna be about the size 
of the bones that the simulator has. And then what I'm gonna do, I also have a couple of materials here that we can also use. I can use the right material for this. And then what we can do as well is I'm gonna make this a prefab, so drag it and drop it into prefabs, and then we can just double click it. It's gonna display basically the bone information in there. I can say bone name, and then we can just leave it by default for now. It's going to be disabled. But let me go ahead and go back in here into Unity, because right now we haven't really called into build hand simple skeleton so we need to do that so if you go in here this is going to tell us okay what are we building the skeleton for so we can just say in this case it's going to be we can say parentheses and it's going to be for the left hand because that's the area that we have it on and then we're also going to be having one here for the right hand all right guys so it looks like this is running correctly now one issue that I found is make sure that you don't have on the hand tracking manager anything on the position. So everything should be zeroed out. Otherwise the hands are going to be offset. So if I were to, you know, move this forward, it's going to offset the hands. And that's the case. In that case, I don't want that to happen. Just make sure that everything is zeroed out so that it is positioned correctly. So you can see that it is working. We can also go here into my scene view and then start looking at some of these bones and you can see the hands are moving. If I were to move the hand here to the left and right, it's also updating the hand position. I can also change the rotation and it's going to also update it. And I can also you know, move it forward. If we wanted to do a gesture though, you can also do a gesture. I can also do that gesture. It's basically like pointing like this. I can also do a fist and you can also do you know, a pinch and then thumbs up. Thumbs up doesn't look really good with the spheres. Let me see if I can rotate a little bit. And it kind of looks, it kind of looks funny. And I can also do it here, it's gonna be a nail. So it is identifying the right positions based on what the simulator is sending and then displaying them based on the information that we're getting, that we're getting from the bone. So I can also, if I wanted to hold basically one of these ones, I can also do that. Basically this one is gonna be the C gesture can also move, you know, these up and down. This one in this case is gonna be also a display information type feature. So I'm gonna say display in this case, gesture, and you can say display gestures, I think it's fine. And then we're also going to say hand a skeleton four. Okay, so it looks like that looks good. Let's remove this, and then we can just call these from, from anywhere. We can, we can call it from, well, from the update. I'm gonna call it from here, and I'm also going to say, well, this is gonna be for the right hand. And then I'll do the same thing that we did in here. And then this one is going to be for, for the left hand. So another thing that I need to do though, right now that's not going to work. It's not gonna do anything because we need to actually call into the system here. So I'm gonna say input system extensions and the ML gesture classification. And we also need to start tracking that, otherwise it's not going to work. And then I also am going to do on the on destroy, see here on the very end, we can also stop this from tracking, do the same thing here, just to make sure that we keep everything clean and our memory as clean as we can. All right guys, so it looks like this is up and running and you can see that everything is set to none because we really don't have a gesture initiated just yet. Let's say that I press holding here and I were to do, maybe we'll do open hand. You can see the left hand, the name is open and the value that we're getting back from the gesture system is four. So what if we wanted to do that with the right hand? We can do hold, but in this case, we can do something like maybe I'll just do a pinch and you can see that we have the left hand with open and then also the right hand with a pinch. So which shows you that you can do also some of the gesture you know, detection pretty easily by just adding a couple lines of code.
So the next thing that I want to show you though is how we can display the bone names on our hands. All right, so it looks like that it's all done. And I added these bone names visibility just to determine if we want to display it or not. So let's go ahead and test it out here in the scene and I'll show you also how this works on the device. All right, guys, this is working correctly. You can see here that we're getting some of our bone names. So index tip, index DIP, index PIP, thumbs tip, basically all the different bone names in there. We can see also the same thing on the other hand. Let's go ahead and change the, the gesture from that to be an open hand. And then maybe for the controller though, we could just go ahead and hide the controller that way we can see everything correctly. You can see the hands are showing perfectly and beautifully. We can also see the state on the logger. You can see thumb tape and then thumb MCP and the pinky here on the, on the very bottom. So things are working great. So let me show you how this looks on the actual device. All right, guys, I hope you found this information very helpful. Today, we looked at Unity hand tracking integration and also how we can integrate it with the Unity XR components with Magic Leap SDK. If you have any questions about it or like to see additional integrations such as the one with MRTK3 or OpenXR, let me know below. Also, if you miss a link to this video series, make sure that you look at the video series above. So that's everything that I have for today. Thank you very much, guys.